This is the ultimate guide to 3D inside of After Effects. Make sure you guys stay to the very end of this video because I promise you there is honestly so much sauce in this video that not a lot of people have covered on YouTube yet. I'm going to be showing you guys a free way and a paid way to create the best looking 3D inside of After Effects and have it looking like it was created in Blender or other crazy programs just like that. And before we hop into this video, if you guys are looking to get some drag and drop high quality assets for your edits, go check out my website, tinytapes.ca. We have a ton of editing packs on there. And we also have drag and drop 3D editing packs that require no render time whatsoever. But let's hop right into this tutorial. So opened up inside of After Effects here, we have this music video clip from an Xavier So Bass music video. I recently shot and edited. To get started on the freeway, we're going to head over to a website right here called Sketchfab. Now, on this website, there are a ton of 3D objects and models that you can download and use for free inside of After Effects, and I'm going to be showing you guys how you can do that before we jump into the advanced, more complicated way. So you want to go up to the Explore tab here, and then if we go over to Categories here, and then you want to hit downloadable right here and then you'll have all of these 3d objects or if you're looking for something more specific you can search the 3d model right here i'm going to search uh iphone 4 and boom we have this iphone 4 right here and you guys can see it's a downloadable 3d model and you can move it around and see the entire thing inside of here super simple just like so this model looks a little bit more high quality so i'm going to go with this one here yeah this is way high quality make sure you guys check them out and take a good look at them anyways we're going to go ahead and hit download 3d model right here and this is where the important part comes into play you want to make sure you download the .glb file for this free way of doing it so go ahead and hit download hit save and then you'll have your .glb right here so we're going to go into after effects now and i'm just going to drag and drop this .glb inside of here and then we're going to hit okay and then you want to hit make comp size and if you go into advanced you can turn down the object scale and then we're going to hit okay and we have our iphone in here just like that now if you're wondering how can i track it to my scene how can i actually make it look like it's in the environment because if you just play it through it looks kind of dumb right now even though it is 3d and if you go into transform here and mess with the orientation you can move everything around and you can make it look super sick but it's not tracked to the scene yet so to do that what you want to go ahead and do is turn off the phone for now and then we're gonna go down to our base clip right here and we're gonna right click on it. We're gonna go down to track and stabilize and then we're gonna hit track camera. You guys can see it's analyzing in the background here now. It's gonna analyze one through 55 frames. So this might take a little bit. You guys get this error right here saying it has to match the composition and size. My little workaround for this is you can either go into composition and change everything and move it around, which is kind of annoying. What I recommend you do is you actually just render this out as a ProRes. So I'm gonna go to file. We're gonna hit export, add to render queue, and then I'm gonna call it render. We're gonna hit save. And then we're not gonna make this H.264. We're not gonna have the preset one. We're gonna go with QuickTime so it loses no quality. We're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna hit render right here. Now this is only gonna take a few seconds to render. And then all we have to do now is drag this back in, turn off the bottom one. And now we can do the exact same thing as before, hit track, hit track camera. You guys are gonna realize over time, if you do a lot of tracking inside of After Effects, there are so many complications and errors that can come up and there are a ton of workarounds for them. Uh, if we get any more errors, I'll show you guys how to do them. But if you get curious or you get stuck, I have a tutorial on that that I'll link right here above. So anyways, you guys can see we have a ton of these little tracking points. If you want to make them more visible, you can turn up the track point size right here. And if we open up advanced, we could see there is an average error of 2.92 pixels, which is not good. You want to have that as close to one as possible. Even below one would be amazing. I'm sure we'll get a decent track off of this. But just so you guys know, in the future, I'm going to show you guys a super quick trick. We're going to delete the 3D camera tracker off here. We're going to click on our clip and then we're going to go into effect and we're going to search something called unsharp mask. We're going to drag and drop this on our clip here and then we're going to go ahead and turn up the amount and turn up the radius. You guys can see this makes it a ton more textured if we turn it on and off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click and then we're going to pre-compose this and hit the second one, move all attributes into a new composition and then adjust the composition duration and we're going to hit OK. And now what we can go ahead and do is right click on the comp and we're going to track that now and hit track camera. Now, since it's a lot more textured, it has a lot more information to grab onto and it's actually worse, which is pretty insane, but we're just going to go with it. If we go ahead and turn this up here, uh, we're going to highlight these and we're only going to track these right here. So we're going to right click and we're going to hit create null and camera right here. And now that we have our null and camera in, we can turn our iPhone back on and you guys can see 
it's tracked to the seam, but it does not look good. And how can we fix that? Well, there was something called the Z space, which is sending an object further into the background. This has a lot of movement and it's a little bit shaky because it's too close to the camera. We want to send it further back so it won't have that shakiness. So how do you do that? We're going to open up this here. We're going to go into transform and then in position, which is the last one, we could send it further back into the Z space. And you guys could see there's a lot less wiggling compared to here. So if we just go ahead on position again, and let's send it really far back, just like this, you guys can see it's very smooth now. So if you want to resize it, you can just turn up the scale and then you can just move it to the side here. And that looks great there, guys. That's tracked to the scene very well. Now, this is where the cool part comes. This is where you're going to animate everything and make it look super nice. Now, we're going to go into position here and we're going to keyframe that keyframe orientation. And, then... and now using orientation, we're going to position it how we want to have it at the beginning. And then going to the end, how we want to have it at the end here. We have it animated over time, just like that. And let's say we want to add a little bit of like rocking back and forth to it. We'll mess with these here. So we get something just like that. And boom, that's how you can track to your scene. Now, the only downfall about this, about this way of doing it, which is the free way compared to the paid way that I'm about to show you guys is let's say you have your scene colored a certain way. Like if you were to put a LUT on top of this, let me go ahead and show you guys here. We hit adjustment layer and then we'll go ahead inside of here, hit look, and we'll just throw on one of these LUTs here. It doesn't look bad, right? But like this is not flat. The phone OBJ is not flat compared to the actual video here. And if you did want to make the phone OBJ flat, you would have to like drag and drop a lumetri color on top of the GLB, which you can't do. You can't add effects on top of the dot GLB layer, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, it doesn't look terrible if you already color your footage and you add it in, but here is the paid way of doing it. All right, so we have the exact same scene as before, but this time we have it paired inside of Premiere Pro here with the LUT that we're using on top of it, as you guys can see here. And this is why the advanced way, in my opinion, I like it so much more. So we're going to open up After Effects here and we're going to get started. We're going to be using Element 3D for the advanced way. It is a paid plugin, but I guarantee you guys it is super worth it. So we're going to go ahead and right click here, hit new, and we're going to create a new solid here. And then you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to call this iPhone. So this is pretty much the exact same way that you would do it as before. But if you go into the Sketchfab website, you're not going to be looking for GLB files. You want to look for OBJs. And before I get any more into this, I'm sure a lot of you guys who have watched this channel have used Element 3D before. And before you click off the video, I promise you guys there is some new sauce in this tutorial that I'm going to be showing you guys. You guys aren't going to know everything. So I recommend you guys stick around to the end of this video so you fully soak up all the information that you can get from Element 3D inside of here. So I decided not to use an iPhone because honestly, finding an OBJ event online was super difficult for some reason. So we're going to go ahead and do something else. Let's go into Sketchfab here and hit downloadable. All right, so I've resorted to doing this tree branch here. I think it's going to match the scene a little bit more because it's at the park. So we're going to go ahead and hit download on this. And then we're going to show all. And we're going to click on OBJ and do the one with the most gigabytes. There's going to be a few options usually. Then we're going to hit download. And then we're going to open up the file here just by double clicking on it. It's going to take a couple seconds to extract here. Now we're going to double click on it and we're going to have everything inside of here. So if you go into After Effects now and hit import, we can double click this file and then open up the OBJ and hit OK, hit OK again. And then we're going to hit normalize size and boom, this one already has the textures applied onto it. Just like I was telling you guys before, some of them are going to have it. Some of them are. not It's a little bit complicated. And then we're going to hit OK. So we're going to have our branch inside of here now. So if you open up group one and we open up particle replicator and particle look and then rotation as well, inside of rotation, you can rotate everything. And then inside of the first one here, you can actually turn up the particle count, which makes a ton of them. So I'm going to go ahead and 30 of them. Then we're going to go into replicator effects and hit scatter and using scatter, we can actually move them around and then go into position and we're going to turn on particle size random. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to turn up the particle count just like that. And then let's turn up particle size. And now we can go into multi object here, enable multi object. And we hit random rotation here. We can move them all around to rotate in certain ways. So if we keyframe that rotation random and then go to the very end here, you guys can see they're going to move around. So here's a trick as well. Now that we have everything inside of here, you guys already know how to track it to the scene. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that for this one, but I'm going to show you guys some sauce in Element 3D that you probably don't know. If you didn't know that stuff before, you're going to be blown away by this now. If you go inside of custom layers here, and then we do custom texture maps, we can actually set layer one, hit none, and we can make that our video clip. So once you make the texture map, the video, you can then go inside of scene setup here and you could click on the OBJ, click on the texture here. If we go down to environment and hit this little arrow here, 
we can load the video in as a texture, which is going to take the colors from it and match it on this. So if you hit OK now, the colors are going to be matched a little bit better. But if we go inside of Premiere Pro here and we load this in, you guys could see it looks really out of place. Like these look really dumb compared to everything else. So what we have to do inside of After Effects here now, which we couldn't do before, is if we open up Lumetri Color, we can actually drag and drop it on top because it's just a solid. So we're going to hit drag and drop. And now if we go inside of Basic Correction here, what we can actually do is turn down the contrast of them to make it match. So you guys can see easily there, it kind of desaturates and matches everything to this. And then if we go ahead and turn down the saturation, and we open up Premiere Pro again, you guys could see it matches a lot more. It just needs a few more tweaks to have it looking perfect. So what we could do for those is we're gonna throw on a really good friend of mine called RSMB, which is gonna add real motion blur to it, which is gonna make it look really good. So if we go like mid animation here, you guys could see we turn it on and off. Tad of motion blur, we'll turn that to one here just to increase the intensity of it, looking great. And then what we can also do as well here, if you go back into Element 3D, we can go into render settings and we're gonna go into shadows, hit enable, and change this to ray traced. And then we're gonna go into ambient inclusion, hit enable and turn that to ray traced. And then we're gonna go into motion blur, hit on, turn this to depth sorted. And then boom, you guys could see just how much more texture that added to these logs. It makes them look really, really clean. So if we go back into Premiere Pro here now, you guys can see they're looking fantastic. And boom guys, we have it looking fantastic. It's gonna take a while to render since they are super, super, super high quality. As you can see there, they almost look real. I would maybe add a little bit of Gaussian blur to them, but like, look at this guys. This just looks absolutely and fantastic with everything we added to it. Go and turn the Lumetri color off. And like, look at that. Matches the scene so much more. If we go into element render settings here and we turn off the ambient occlusion that we added, you guys are gonna see how much of a difference that really makes there. Like look at the shadows, looking great and then also shadows here as well. Anyways, guys, that is the ultimate guide to adding 3D inside of After Effects. I have another tutorial on titles if you guys wanna go ahead and watch that. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because I'm gonna be uploading content just like this for the rest of forever. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.